This tutorial is about the fast setting up of high quality product renderings. It includes lighting, materials and how to apply product graphics, like a company logo, and adding tiny imperfections for added realism. First of all, if you're using surface modeling software, it's a good idea to make sure your model is watertight. Watertight means there are no gaps between surfaces. The cube here can't be stitched into a solid shell. It has an open boundary highlighted in yellow. Strictly speaking, for rendering this isn't necessary. Like it would be for exporting usable data for solid modeling, CNC machining or 3D printing. Let's begin. Select a part and stitch it into a watertight solid shell. Convert the shell into polygons using a suitable tessellation. That means a triangle density that allows for close-up renders that won't look faceted. Weld the polygons and export the part as OBJ file. For rendering in Maxwell Studio, select the meter reference and deselect tessellate because your part is already tessellated. Follow this procedure for all parts of your product. Open Maxwell Studio and load a standard beginner layout using the Windows menu. Drag a photo studio from the library. Choose one that fits to the size of your product. Unlock the camera sensor settings in the Attributes panel and set it to HD format. That means 1920 by 1080 pixels. Change the focal length of the lens to something suitable for product photography and then set ISO, shutter speed and f-stop for a nice depth of field. Activate the camera in the viewport and import all your OBJ files together. Make sure to select Rename the new one so the parts don't overwrite each other. All parts will appear in the object list. Center the view using the right mouse button menu in the viewport. Select all parts and rotate and move them to their initial rest position. Also make sure to scale the parts up or down to their real-world size. This is important for Fusion or Rhino users that can't specify an output reference dimension.
reset the transformations you applied so that they won't interfere with textures and UV maps later. Autofocus and change the environment from sky to none. Only the photo studio emitters shall light the scene. If you leave the sky active, the sun will overpower your lights and your image becomes a total whiteout. Start the interactive renderer and frame the view. You can change the interactive renderer speed and quality anytime and continue working on your scene in parallel. Now import the materials needed for this particular product and choose Embed. This means the materials in your scene will be saved in the file. Drag the materials onto the parts in the viewport or the object lister. When assigning the black ABS plastics, you receive an alert message. Just click Yes to accept it. What is that message telling us? The black ABS plastic materials use so-called real-scale 3D texture projections that generate tiny imperfections such textures are independent from the size or the UVs of the surfaces that they are assigned to. The black ABS plastic with a logo that is assigned to the grip requires an additional texture projection in channel 1. This makes the logo projection independent of the imperfection texture projection in channel 0. So select the grip part and create a second projector for channel 1 in the geometry tab. Check if everything is ok in the interactive renderer and maybe let it render for a bit to a higher quality. To project the logo, select the grip and change the cubic projector in channel 1 to a planar projector. Click adjust to set the projector to its default size of 1 meter. 
and select UV mode in the menu bar in order to see the projector in the viewport. Get the logo dimensions from Photoshop and enter them in the scale fields. Rotate and move the projector in place while checking its position in the interactive renderer. Notice that the projector can be in front as well as behind the object, unlike a physical projector in the real world. Exit the UV mode by selecting the object mode. You are done. Now you can set the render options. Choose a suitable time and sampling level and don't forget to switch on the multi-light function. Name your output files and make sure your render is 16-bit PNG. If you want to continue working on your scene, you need to save the scene file you just set up in order to resume the render later. Now start the render. Remember to choose the CPU mode, unless your computer uses an NVIDIA graphics card for a GPU. In the renderer, you can see how time and quality progress, you can check the camera EXIF data and other settings, and you can pan and zoom.
The multi-light feature allows you to change the lighting of your scene without having to redo the render. A new rendering is generated when you click Refresh. You can also reset the lights to their initial values. If you made changes, save the image at 16-bit and save the MXI file in case you want to resume the render later to a higher quality, or if you want to change the lighting again. And now it's your turn. Thank you for watching and listening.